It's, it's octo filter. Octo filter. Okay, I'll get this. It's like your filter. Go filter. Okay, now I remember it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Studio 21. And today's Tech Tip Tidbits with Tim is all on the oft misunderstood Octafilter, uh, especially the one that we have in the new base fly rig version 2. Uh, I could speak for my own personal experience. When I first tried it, I was a little uneasy because I didn't realize that it's a different tool and you need to learn how to use it properly. Uh, I ran into a couple walls with it trying to figure out the right way to do it. And uh, it, it's all based upon technique. You know, the different ways you have to do it, uh, palm muting, uh, how you hit the strings. And you know, once I figured all that out, it really, really was such a cool thing and I freaking love it. You know, so we're gonna talk with Andrew today and he's gonna explain, you know, all the different features of the Octafilter. And we're even gonna have a vintage analog Octafilter to compare it to. The Pearl Octaver. That's right. And I am going to hand it off to Andrew. Well, the Pearl is a rare item. It goes for about $400 on uh, Reverb or eBay, whichever you like. And uh, there is a reason for it. It just sounds really cool. And if you listen to recordings from the 80s, you hear it. And it has a very distinct sound. Now, an octave divider is not a pitch transposer. Pitch transposer is actually shift the pitch of your instrument, uh, much like you slow down a tape or speed up a tape when you play back. Where an octave divider is basically, it's a mathematical function. It divides the input signal by two. When the input signal is not clear, mathematically it's not a clear note octave divider goes crazy it's like what do i do what do i divide there's no number there's no like it's a 440 hertz divided by two right, right? so let's try that with the best available octaver that when you play like a low f for example play a low f That was uh, that little jump. That's it. Yep. Why is that? Because all basses are providing a tone that is not just the fundamental. There are the harmonics in it. And as you play, depending how you pick, where on the neck you are, different harmonics become to the front. Sometimes it's not even the fundamental or the octave. It could be you know, third, fifth, whichever. And then all of a sudden the octave divider jumps to that one. And that's what we just heard. And that's what I experienced when I first gave it a try with the new bass fly rig version too. You know, I tried to play like I normally do mm -hmm. and it was unsatisfactory. It just felt un unfamiliar to me. And I'm like, wow, th th this, this is just kind of weird, you know? And then I realized that, you know, if I, if I use the proper technique with it, Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it just blew me away. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, more type of synth-based stuff. You got to, you know, palm mute, right. mute with your left hand, mute with your right hand, a consistent attack. You know, because basically, like you said, it's doing a mathematical equation. It's a good thing you said uh, the attack because there is one way to fix this problem is using a compressor. Right, exactly. Now, we are lucky enough that in a fly rig, we do have a compressor and it's placed in front of it. What the compressor does is evens out the note. Right. Okay? So let's try, play just the low F. And then, see, ours is already tracking somewhat better. Absolutely. But then when you put the compressor on. However, Way smoother. You, yeah, however, you can still sometimes have a glitch. Oh yeah. So by, uh, using a proper technique you can eliminate those or not playing for example like a low F is really an odd uh, sound because most of the time you use an octave where you're supposed to be playing up right. and that's something I found out too playing around with it you know that uh, higher up on the fat strings you know yeah. was really really yeah, cool you know worked. It was 
you some really cool stuff. And here is why the Octaver is such a great tool, because it emulates those old Moog synthesizer sounds or the Taurus pedal sound. Oh, yeah. You know, the big, strong, uh, fundamental bass sound, where many times the pitch transposer is kind of flabby, because it's using a splicing technique to create the octave lower, is that and it makes it wobbly. That was just, yeah. that's the same exact mm. word I was going to use, the wobble. You know, almost like a synthetic, like woo 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 right. right. And maybe it's not so distractive when you just play like this, but when you're in a band situation mm -hmm. and you are providing the fundamental of the band, and that one is kind of wobbly, the whole band is just not tight anymore. Yeah. So every technology has pluses and minuses. So it's just like learning a new technology, for example, if you play stand-up bass and somebody gives you a bow and you never use the bow, guess what? You're not going to play with the bow right away. <laughs> exactly. It takes a little while to learn, to master, and to bring out the best. Well, it, it's like any different technique, slapping, tapping, exactly. you know, a, a, or any fretless bass, you know. So I don't mean, be lazy and ex expect that I plug into something and it's going to like do everything it, it, that it, I hear it, on tapes. It took me like 15 yeah. minutes of, of playing around with it, just trying to shape my technique into something that, you know, it needed. You know, it was mm. just basically learning how to use the tool properly. Right. You know. Now here's the great thing about the um, a bass fly rig is now we start to set up some sound. Now we can kick in the uh, Sans amp. Yeah. which one gives a final shaping so it's more sounding like coming through an amplifier so play something and oh yeah chorus. that's the chorus that's actually also emulates when you had like a mini Moog, mm -hmm. and you had two oscillator running oh, yeah. slightly out of tune, right? Come on, that detune knob on those things. Exactly. <laughs> so that also gives you like such a fantastic, huge sound, you know, that that you cannot uh, create with with like a, a pitch transposer. Now that you mention that, it gives you, you know, it gives you the illusion. Well, not the illusion. It actually, it's moving. You know, yeah. and any time like, but I, it's not moving on the bottom. See, that's the difference. That's what I was telling you about the wobbliness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because on bass, you never want to move the bottom. Mm -hmm. You want to move the right. top. But on those vintage synths, you know, it, it gave a big wider appearance. Right. You know, like with the chorus on it. So. And also, they also modulates the pulse wave. Yeah. It's called the duty cycle. I love that one. Oh, duty. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the duty, uh, <laughs> which is the pulse wave, and that also gives you like another type of sound but getting back to modulating the fundamentals that's why like a bass chorus usually has a crossover in it oh and it removes the bottom end so they're not chorusing the bottom end because otherwise you're gonna get seasick right yeah because <laughs> you know? yeah. the whole stage is gonna be whoa, whoa. you just modulate the top which one gives you that nice three-dimensional right. sound we just got yeah it's pretty neat so do you know how to use this now I do now. Okay. I, I, I know how to how to how to do that. And back to basics. filter here that you can set to yeah get more fizziness on the top Remove that. oh that sounded pretty cool yeah. even a fuzz But see, the sense that really gives like a rounded off sound because yeah. most basses, you know, nowadays people discovered you should really record it through an amp or through like a bass driver or right. something that gives that shape. Oh, yeah. Because going direct, it's kind of flat and Sterile, life a yeah, little bit. Very much. You know. Although back in the 80s, that's what people 
did, and that's what gave me the inspiration to design the bass driver yeah. to give that lively sound to the bass, more dynamic, more harmonics, and more expression with your fingers. You know, I can tell you, when I was a, a young tadpole, the first time in like a studio, you know, with a board and a reel, a reel, mm -hmm. I think it was a Neve and a Studer, actually. Which is know, pretty Which good. was pretty neat. Yeah. It was someplace in Long Island. I, don't, I wonder if they're still around. But uh, r regardless, you know, we, we trucked all the gear, you know, I, I think I was probably like 17. You know, the drum set, my, my amp, the guitar amps and everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the record and everything. And then when it was time for, for me, because we did it like scratch back, he goes, okay, come on in the control room. And he took my bass and he plugged it well, just into the board. And I was like, really? It's like almost like neutering um, exactly. a stallion. I have to say, for lack of a better description, it sounded like a, a well-executed fart. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. But you know, we wound up mic and the SVT and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, I wish I had a Sans amp back then. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So Andrew, yeah. another thing I learned with using the Octafilter mm -hmm. was one note at a time. <laughs> My natural tendency is to do little, you know, fits and yeah. stuff like that. And but and, and, here's the thing, again, divider mathematics. Right. How do you divide two numbers at the same time? You don't. Right. <laughs> I found that out. Now with the uh, uh, pitch transposer, you can do it because it's just like slowing down the tape. Right. Okay. But as I said, it has a different tonality. And we were going after that 80s sound, you know, that Moog sound. Which were monophonic. Which were monophonic. Yep. And till this day, when people have the money and the studio time, they use that monophonic analog Moog synth to create bass lines because it's nothing sounds like it. nothing so what is polyphonic what is monophonic it's it's a man with a wife a man with five wives right that's the difference polyphonic is many many wives <laughs> and monophonic is you have only one right so it's more than one note, basically. It's right. th that easy. So it's easy yeah. to remember. You know, I like to attach, you know, like right. visuals. So and that's a good visual. And it's easier to work with one note <laughs> than it is or one with wife. five <laughs> notes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, that's the truth, you know. Yeah. Mathematical as well, too. So you have to understand it's monophonic. You have to play one note at a time. And also, sometimes it takes a little time for the divider to see what note you are playing. Mm -hmm. Because a bass note has a very low frequency, so it takes, takes longer for a wave to come in and say, oh, what is this frequency? Now I can divide it, right? right? When you play really high, then it's much faster right. because, uh, you know, it's easier to analyze what you got. And, and that's why playing up on the strings yeah. gives better results, too, right. because there's less stuff happening. So you're not even hearing the division fundamental you hear the divisions harmonics right okay yeah but when you play up here then you hear the actual fundamentals yeah so you get a thicker sound that translates better on most systems yep that's all i did it just just took a little time figuring it out you know i expected okay i'm gonna hit a button and but you yeah. know you know i also compare this many times to like cameras that there are like these cameras, you know, yeah. you don't have to do anything just to take right. it. But guess what? When you're a professional, you don't use this. You use a camera that you have to learn sometime for years how to yeah. use it for the best advantage. But then you get a better final result. Absolutely. Because you have full control. And that's what a professional musician needs. Full control over their sound and create unique sounds which you need equipment that gives you that kind of flexibility. Yeah. So basically you have to use the product with the single note and also try to create notes that don't have too many harmonics. Right. Because if too many harmonics, they also notes, believe it or not. Oh yeah. This is a crazy thing that when you play one note on your bass, you're not playing one note. You're playing one fundamental and the harmonics, but our ear melts it together. So right. it sounds like more than one only times you hear one note is like on a synth when you just put like a sine wave through right or like a whistle or mm -hmm. like a flute but even the flute in the beginning has that wind wow. noise yeah. and after when that disappears that's 
the closest thing to uh -huh. sine wave, like no harmonics. But the bass obviously doesn't sound like a flute. No. Okay, that's why, because it has all the harmonics right. on it. And uh, th those harmonics can confuse a divider. Right. Okay. And also, if you play a chord on your bass, which you can, but the uh, uh, octave divider not going to respond. It doesn't know what note to, right. to pick up. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that explains a lot with that. All right. That's the story, but everything is in here, right? Yeah. From the compressor to uh, the uh, uh, Sans Amp 2 style, mm -hmm. with the character control. Oh, yeah. That, the uh, Sans Amp and the VT are in there. That's right. Right. Then the tuner uh, bites. Yep. That gives you that nice mm -hmm, little bite. clanky. Yeah. Two channels, so you can have one like overdriven, the other yeah. one is not uh, overdriven, cleaner. Then the octave filter with the uh, envelope, the fuzz, the octave, and uh, speaker sim, and the chorus, or the great chorus. I have to say, I love the chorus on yes. this. I mean, I, I said it in one of the other videos, it's the coolest one knob chorus I think I've you ever You know played. why? Because this chorus is not based upon the normal chorusing that you have one line that you're like slightly delay and modulate. It's based upon the pitch shifter with which we were talking oh. about. I don't really like it for a full octave. Mm -hmm. This is actually less than a quarter note shift. Oh, really? Okay. So what it does is just moves it a little bit wider, and that's what they used to do way back, like in the 90s, with the harmonizer. Just add that little pitch shift, like a quarter note or less, and it just gives you like that really lush sound. And that's why you don't need like a speed control, because there is no speed. You don't see... Uh, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, you no, know? no speed here. Yeah, it's no set the right one, you, you, no speeding. You don't get any tickets. <laughs> Yeah. Just a ticket to rock. That's right. Or, <laughs> or jazz. <laughs> you know, I, I always like to, to point out that, you know, our products are really not built just for rockers or heavy yeah. metal. Yeah. Or, you know, we have many jazz players who use it, country players. Oh, yeah. Um, even like uh, music like Gyp Gypsy Kings, who mm -hmm. I love, you know, on the bass they used our product. And uh, all kind of music because it lends itself to create a sound that in the past was much more difficult to achieve. You needed a right. bunch of gear. Now it's all in like a small package. Yeah. And that brings us all the way back around to it's a tool in your toolbox and you have to learn exactly. how to use it. it. You can't try to hammer in a nail with a screwdriver. Right. You know, I mean, you, you can, but it's pretty messy. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, once you learn to take the time to work with stuff, yep. And you can realize its full potential, and it's exactly what happened to me with yeah. this. Well, I really learned a lot, Andrew, and I think everybody else did. Okay, everybody, so that wraps it up for this episode of Studio 21, Tech Tip Tidbits with Tim. Don't forget, leave your comments below, and if you have any further questions, you can email info at tech21nyc.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and our website, tech21nyc.com. So from Andrew and myself, ciao. Ciao. Mmm. Very good. Getting better. It is. Every it's time. getting better all the time.